Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. In today's video, we're back at the listed property over in Kent and we're gonna start getting a copper pipe work in for the first fixed radiator positions. So for those of you that watched our previous video, you would have seen we've already got the main pipe runs through on the first floor. If you didn't watch that video, I'll leave a link at the end of this one. You can check out how we got all these main runs installed. So from here now, we need to start teeing off and branching off to our first fixed radiator locations on the first floor. So we're gonna be using the wall ravens. We'll be securing them in between the joists and running the pipe work along to our rad location. So. What I'll be doing is I'll be using um, a laser measurement tool to work out the BTUs for each room. And then once I've done that, I'll work out the right size radiator for the locations that the clients have requested. So I believe in here, we're having one over in that corner, one over there. So to be honest, more than likely we'll use the full width of that space. And so we're not too sure what the depth of the wall finish is gonna be yet, because it's likely it's either gonna be battened off or dot and dab. So, what we'll do is we'll get the width of the radiator, including the rad valves, and then we'll uh, get our pipes run underneath. So when we come to actually bring the towels up, we'll only have to chop elbows in. So yeah, what we'll do is get all the tools loaded in and get some wall raven screwed up. Okay, so the first thing I need to do when I'm first fixing my radiators is work out the center of the radiator. So it's a little bit hard to see on camera, but I've got a pencil line here for the center. So what I've done is I've worked out the BTUs and I've also um, picked out a radiator size that's suitable between these two walls here. So I'm going for a 1400. I then need to add 45 mil either side for the TRVs. So once I've done that, I indicate the TRV measurement with the pencil line straight down either side. So that would make it 1495 and from that point then, I then start installing my wall ravens, which are here. So as you can see, they're telescopic. They just screw in either side, saves you using battens. Um, so I've got them all in place. Then once I do that, I just drop a piece of 15 mil pipe work in there and run it all the way along to our main manifold, which is all these 22s. And then from this point there, I just pull little kinks uh, straight up into the pipes and obviously we've got flow and return so I need to take a feed off of each Once I've done that I can then put my felt lagging on nail it down because I know that this section's done And it'll be ready for the rads to go on the wall so at this stage we're not actually bringing towels through the floor um, All we're doing is just leaving the pipes underneath the floor ready to go So the reason we're doing that is because we're not sure what the depth of the wall is going to be once it's insulated or boarded We're not exactly sure what's happening yet. So the pipes are underneath at the right center So what I will ask the builder to do is if they're laying chipboard flooring to um, Leave hatches underneath each radiator so we can bring the towels up exactly right So there's not really much point of us having a guess and bringing the towels up because no doubt they'll be wrong it would just be a complete waste of time. So yeah, we've got these two radiators in now. Bailey's been working on the other side, so we're going to check out the ones he's done. Okay, so over on the other side that Bailey's been working on, while I've been talking to the client and the interior designer, Bailey has cracked on and got quite a few of the bends to the rads in. So a uh, similar thing, he's got the wall ravens in first, and then what we would do is we'll tee into the pipe work, um, get it clipped along the wall ravens here, and same thing here, we're not sure what the build-up of the wall is going to be, so pipe centers are just left underneath ready to go so somebody mentioned about using press fit in notches um, and about the depth but to be honest with you we never really have a problem if you put a level across the joist the uh, press fittings are a good like five mil underneath still and that's with a 30 mil notch so i'm still quite happy with it um, another person was saying you know if we have to start putting thicker and thicker insulation on that we would then have to um, almost do away with copper, which I definitely do totally understand, but hopefully that isn't gonna happen. If it does, I'll be working down my local screw fix or something because there's no way I'm just gonna be installing plastic absolutely everywhere. So yeah, that one is in there. So the only ones we can't do at the moment up here are the towel, uh, towel radiators. 
Uh, the reason being they're floor standing, so we need them on site ready to go. Um, so we can actually get the right dimensions off of it. So for now, we're just doing the radiators in the bedroom. So in this room here, we're actually gonna have a two meter long one. Originally, we was gonna have two, but obviously that window over there is quite small, quite low down. So, so yeah, that's it. That's really how we get our first fix in for our radiators. Just chuck the wall ravens in, bit of 15. And the good thing, or the other good thing about these wall ravens is you can get them all level because if you just put the top here, level with the joist, you know all your wall raven's gonna be the same throughout. So yeah, teed in here. Builders have been working in here. A few dings in our pipes, not gone unnoticed. So yeah, making good progress and I think we're ready to start downstairs. Okay, so we've moved downstairs now and we're starting to get the pipe runs in for the radiators in the kitchen. So we've got one radiator going over there where Bailey is and one here. So we're dropping down from the manifold above. Um, this is probably the easiest of the pipe runs downstairs. A few of them are actually quite awkward. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way from this side of the house all the way through the property and doing them one by one. So. What we're doing is these walls are being built off about 80 mil we're told so we're able to just clip the pipe work um, run it down and what we'll do is we'll uh, bring some towels out for the radiators down here so just getting the pipes all bent up now and then we can feed them through and start working above teeing them in Okay, so I've got the first drop in now in the kitchen and what we've done is we've actually dropped the pipe down directly where the TRVs are gonna be. So the reason we've done that is so we don't drill back through them when we're hanging the radiators. So you've got no chance of popping the screw through it. Although the customer might stick one straight through that one, but we'll let them know it's there. Um, I was just gonna show you a little tip. So when you're using um, press fittings, it's always good to uh, mark the pipe um, around the clip. If you do that, you'll know when you're pressing the fitting if the uh, pipe or the fitting's making everything spin. So what I do is I just put a line on the face of the pipe and then a line either side of the clip and that way I know that when I'm pressing it, both bends up there, I'm not spinning around and going out square on the first floor. So yeah, that drop's all done now. Bailey's got the more tricky one. It's my fault, I went straight for the easy side. <laughs> and um, yeah, he's getting there too. He's got to come behind that beam. So there's a lot of sections like this where obviously we don't want to damage the timber. That's going to stay. That's been here, been there hundreds of years. So trying to get it behind as much as we possibly can. And yeah, he's doing the same thing. He's dropping down to the TRV. So I can jump upstairs now and get those teed into the manifold. Okay, so we're back upstairs now on the first floor and as you can see, we're just picking up those rads that we're installing in the kitchen. So this is on Bailey's side. Again, just use the wall ravens, make it nice and neat. And all we're doing is we're just teeing in onto the downstairs flow and return. So we've got the downstairs flow and return here and the upstairs flow and return there. So once we finish putting all our tees in, that's when we'll get it all felt and lagged. So just walk across this side. Um, so yeah, here are the feeds here for the rad in the kitchen on the right hand side. So yeah, just brought them along again. Straight up to the wall ravens, teed in here. I was a bit premature with my clip in the other day. I put a load of clips in here, but I've had to take them out. So that's all teed in. And yeah, we're good to go. So we're coming to the end of the first day now. And um, yeah, pretty happy with how it's gone. We've got all the standard radiators installed upstairs, all the pipe work to them and then two downstairs. So tomorrow we can just crack on with the ground floor. Hi guys, just a quick update on the chapel job. So the boiler room's all complete and the water's on to the point of the underfloor heated manifolds and the bathroom's on the first floor. So Bailey's been working quite tirelessly on this one and I'm really impressed with what he's done. So let me just show you where we're at. So as you can see, the cylinders are all plumbed in now and the lagging's all on. So yeah, it's looking really good. I'm really happy with how he's designed this one. Even the filling loop matches on the pipe work. Uh, it looks real fancy. So we've got two um, expansion vessels for the cold water because it's in parallel. Uh, one for the heating. 
The low loss header's now in, so we've got a 1560 pump just circulating the heat round to the low loss header, back to the boiler, and then we've got a 25 AE that's circulating around the zones. So Bailey's plumbed this one really smartly, so if ever there's an issue with any of these cylinders, you can literally just isolate one and the other one will just operate as normal. And I think my favorite part of what he's done are these two zone valves and levers here. So it looks quite tight on the camera, but actually it's really accessible, looks really good. and. Um, yeah, it will uh, work really well when you come to service or maintain it. The other thing we did was move the boiler um, slightly forward into a more serviceable position. Um, that window there is going to get blocked up, but the flue was a bit too close to the um, brickwork there. So we've moved it forward, closer to the door and spun it around. So yeah, that's where we're at. So this is all full up with water now and we're just waiting for the electrician to come, get it all wired in and then we can start phase two. Okay, so another job we've got completed on the chapel now is the underfloor heating. So I didn't really film too much of this because it is pretty boring and it is straightforward. But as you can see, we've got the manifold all um, positioned in the right location. And from there, we just followed the plans that we got sent and just installed all the underfloor heating. So the black pipes in conduit, um, that's to stop the heat transferring into the wrong location. So for example, if you had that room over there on, but you wanted this one off, you wouldn't want the heat from the pipes going into that room actually heating up this area. So that just helps sort of stop dissipating the heat. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward really. Just went round uh, clockwise if you're looking at the manifold. So everything's all in now. All we did was we just used a staple gun. Uh, really simple, straightforward. No problems at all. 200 mil centers. So the cellar text here is not very deep and neither is a liquid screed, so we didn't have too much room to play with, with tracks or anything. That's why we stapled it and also it's a lot simpler. So builders are pretty handy on this one. They just marked out in yellow uh, where we couldn't put it. Um, all the plumbing there is what they've done. So yeah, this is all tightly filled as well. So whenever we install underfloor heating, we always make sure it's full up before it gets screeded. So it's filled up at six bar. Let's have a quick look. So yeah, just under six bar. So as you can see, this wall's also not plastered, but when it comes to plastering, we'll be able to just undo these screws, lean it forward, and hopefully they'll be able to get in there. So yeah, that's all done as well. Okay, so it's day two now of the first fix to the radiators and we're gonna be moving down over into the cloakroom. So just spin this around and show you what we're gonna be doing. So on the floor previously, there was a load of York stone, which has now been lifted. So what we're actually gonna be doing is the building where the manifold pipes run to above actually ends here. And this cloakroom and utility has a flat roof above it. So what we're gonna be doing is uh, dropping some feeds down on this right hand side here, um, just to the other side of this chimney stack. Then from here, we're actually going to run MLCP um, through this floor here. So we might have to chase out a bit here. And then we can drop down into this cloakroom. And then from here, we're going to be having a radiator here on the left. And then there will be some like kitchen units here. So you can see how much depth that York stone used to take up from the floor so we should be fine just using some insulated MLC um, just stable to the floor so we're just going to get some rough hot and colds over here or hot colds hot return yeah rad going there and then over here there's a tiny little cloakroom well, there's going to be a toilet so uh, we've kind of decided not to have a radiator in there now which is great so yeah that's part of the work we're going to be doing today as well as that over on this side where the main kitchen is going. Uh, when we did the plant room, I put some feeds through to pick up these kitchen sinks. So these pipes here, we're just gonna drop them down low level for now. So we're still not exactly sure uh, on the final uh, kitchen plan. So if we leave them there underneath the window, I'm sure that's approximately where the sink's going to be going. So yeah, other than that, that'll be this kitchen section done and then we can move on.
Okay, so I've got my risers in now. This is going to be feeding the utility room and the cloak room. We've got hot, hot return, balance cold, and flower return on the central heating for the ground floor. So I could jump up on the first floor now and start getting those piped up. Okay, so while I've been working on the cloakroom and utility feeds, Bailey's been working on the feeds to the kitchen sink. So we've got the hot, hot return and cold main coming through here. So he's dropped it down, all in copper, insulated it all, so it's all good to go. We don't know the final positions yet, um, so we just left it open over there. So you might be wondering, why don't I just nick those feeds there for the cloakroom and utility room? And the main reason being is because I want to make sure that the kitchen sink is totally separate from the rest of the system. So if ever there's a big problem, um, that can always just be left on. And also, I don't want the uh, cold main drinking water being stored in a DAB tank. Although it is potable water, I just think if you're going to be drinking from it, you want it to be direct. Uh, the other reason is it's having a quicker tap in here, so I don't necessarily want that pumped from the DAB tank either. Okay, so we're starting to make good progress now on this side of the property with the first fix of the radiators. So again, we're trying to minimalize the damage that we're creating. So we're just chopping out channels in the plasterboard and Bailey's managed to get his pipes through there through stud work. So that's all teed in already upstairs on the main floor return. So yeah, it's all going good. Okay, so I've just finished installing the pipe where that's gonna be feeding the cloakroom in the utility room. I've had to pull a few offsets um, just to get it all bent round into this one channel. Uh, pretty happy with how it's gone. I've kept the cold over to one side just to stop any heat transfer, but I will get everything all lagged. And then over here, we've just joined onto those risers. Uh, a few bends, but it's quite a busy channel, but I've separated it enough so we'll still be able to lag it. So what I'm doing now is just getting everything nailed down and felted. Uh, just to avoid any movement in a pipe or any noise once the floor's laid down. So yeah, this room's ready to go and we can start moving on to the other side of the property. Okay, unfortunately we've had our first bit of heartbreak on this job. The clients asked for the step to remain as one single step, not two or a slope coming into the bedroom. So unfortunately I've had to move the pipe that came up on the face of that joist and actually run them underneath. So the plan is now they're gonna um, drop the ceiling slightly underneath and that means that the client can have this one big step going into the bedroom. So bit of a shame, I was a little bit upset, but <laughs> It's all looking good again, so I sold, actually soldered it all up rather than pressed it all in. Okay, so we're moving into the other side of the property now and we're starting to make good progress with the central heat and radiator positions. Um, I haven't managed to film too much today as I was altering some of the client's requests to the pipe work. So a good tip when you're hanging radiators at first fix stage is to get them on site but just leave them in the bubble wrap. Just cut out the uh, radiator hooks on the back, get them in position and then yeah, you can just take them off and remove them if needs be, but you know they're not going to get too damaged. So, yeah, moving on to the next room where our main runs are. So, what we've got is we've chased out around the perimeter of this room and installed a copper pipe work to pick up each radiator. So, we've got a main 22mm drop here, which is just coming behind these timbers. So that will go all the way back up to our manifolds. And then, like I say, we've run it all the way around the perimeter of the room, picking up each radiator. So, yeah, it's actually fairly simple running along here. So, Bailey's pulled some fancy bends, but you can't see them because they're all lagged. <laughs> but um, we're using that rubber flex lagging again on this one. I'm starting to think that that's the way forward from now on. It seems a lot better than that grey stuff. 